Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ellen. I have a cup of coffee here. Um, first of all, before I get started on this reading vlog, I just want to ask first, are you a coffee drinker or a tea drinker or what is your beverage of choice? Secondly, if you do like coffee, how do you like to drink your coffee? What I find is my favorite, favorite blend is hazelnut coffee from Starbucks and the Chobani hazelnut creamer. And I don't know if I can show you without tipping it over, but I foam it up. It's delicious. So anyway, let's just get right into it. Um, hello, I am here to discuss Uzumaki by Junji Ito. And um, I'm just here to say hello. I'm going to just cut right into my footage of talking about this manga. And after um, I give you all that footage, then I will be back and give you my final thoughts about this manga and maybe my overall star rating and if I want to read more by him. So let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ellen and in today's video I am bringing you an Uzumaki reading vlog. First, I just want to say I apologize if you hear a bunch of noise in the background. I am doing a load of laundry, so if you hear water noises, that's what that is. But I wanted to vlog my reading experience with Uzumaki because first of all, this is my first Junji Ito manga. So this is my first one ever. And also it's just my first horror manga in general. And because he has been gaining so much traction lately, I just knew I wanted to give him a chance and I do like mystery, thriller, horror kind of books. Oh, I should probably just show you. Um, because I'm really into horror, like novels and stuff in general, even though I don't read that many, which is really odd. I don't know why I don't read more novels that are horror. That needs to change, obviously. But I knew this was probably going to be a manga that I was going to enjoy. However, I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I started this. But anyway, first things first, I just want to mention that this is going to be a spoiler filled vlog. I want to discuss this book or this manga as I'm reading it. I want to share all my thoughts and feelings. I don't want to hold anything back. So if you have not read Uzumaki yet, then maybe don't watch this video yet unless you want to get spoiled for everything because I am probably going to want to discuss it. And if you have read Uzumaki, please leave your comments down below because I'd love to hear your thoughts <laughs> because um, as you'll find out soon, I've already read like the first hundred or so pages. But anyway, I did not know what I was getting myself into. And yeah, anyway, welcome to the vlog. I'm going to get started, so this is your warning. If you don't want to know anything, you know, click out of this video. Otherwise, hello, let's talk. So, the premise for this manga is we are following two main characters, it seems like. Mostly we're following the girl, her name is Kirie, and we also have a secondary main character, it appears, and that is her boyfriend, Shuichi. So, Kirie and Shuichi live in this a coastal town in Japan called Kurozo. Yeah, Kurozo Cho. And it's a little bit odd. Um, her boyfriend Shuichi goes to high school in Midoriyama, Midoriyama Shi, I believe. So a totally different city. And so he takes a train every day to go to school. So they go to different high schools, but they're dating and they live in the same town. And the issue is, right from the beginning, you find that Kirie is walk walking to the train station to meet Shuichi. And as she's walking to the train station, she finds Shuichi's father in an alleyway just staring at something in the wall. And she's like, what is going on here? She's like, is that even his dad? Like, that just seems odd that he's doing that. So she goes up to him. And it is indeed Shuichi's father, and he's staring at a snail shell that has a spiral, you know? Oh yeah, that's that gives you a little preview of what's to come. So the snail shell has a spiral, and he's just staring at it, just enthralled. And she's like, are you okay? Like, you good? You know? And he's just like, 
you know, he's pretty much in his own little world. So she leaves him alone. She goes to the train station. She meets her boyfriend, Shuichi. And she's like, hey, I saw your dad on the way here. He's being a little weird. He was just staring at a snail shell. And Shuichi's like, yeah, my dad's been pretty weird lately. He's been really into spirals. He started collecting things that have spirals in it. He wants, um, there's like these little fish cakes with spirals inside um, called Naruto. He's like wanting those like in his miso soup. He's just obsessed with spirals all of a sudden. And then he just gets stranger and stranger. So our main girl, Kirie, her father is a potter. And Shuichi's father goes to her father at his workshop and he is putting in a custom order for a pottery, like a bowl or, or some sort, that has a spiral in it so he can just stare at it and just kind of like, it's odd, okay? Like it's odd, he wants a spiral patterned bowl. So her father's like, all right, I'll get right on it for you. So at this point, when the when the bowl is finished, Kirie is bringing it to Shuichi's house. She sees his, his father and she's like, hi, I have a special delivery for you. And he's like, oh, I don't need that anymore. And she's like, excuse me? Like, why, why don't you need it anymore? Do you know what he says? He says, I don't need that anymore because I can make spirals with my own body. I can make spirals with my own body. And he then starts moving his eyes separately. Like each eyeball is moving independently of one another. And they started going like in circles like this. He's like, mm, like going all crazy. And that's not the only thing he can do. He can also stick out his tongue really far and curl his tongue into a spiral. He then shows Kirie all of this. You, why do you need outside spirals when you could just make spirals with your own body? And <laughs> she gets freaked out. Like, understandably so. That would freak out anybody, I think. She runs out of the house. She drops, she drops the pottery. She runs, she runs away. And soon after, as she's running away, you see like this delivery guy bringing something kind of heavy on his back. And he goes to Shuichi's father and he's like, hey, I have that special delivery of what you ordered. And his dad's like, oh great, I've been waiting for this. And you're kind of wondering, what is that? What was he waiting for? Oh, you find out. <laughs> so just to let you know, I'm recapping like the first 138 pages. I just literally made it to chapter five. So I'm just kind of catching up on what I've read here. So anyway, Shuichi's father, turns out he ordered this bathtub that, so Japanese style wooden bathtub with like a lid on it. And at first, um, Shuichi and his mother, they're like, he's acting bizarre. Like, this is not healthy. They went to Midoriyamashi to see a doctor and kind of discuss, like, what's going on with his dad. They come back home. The house is empty. They don't know where he is. So they're looking through all the rooms throughout their house until they came to his study. And there they find this wooden Japanese tub. And they're like, what is this? We've never seen this before. They open up the lid and... Trigger warnings, if you're just, if you get uncomfortable with some graphic content, I think if you're reading Junji Ito, you should expect that, but I'm just warning you. So anyway, they open up the lid to this wooden tub and his father curled himself up into a spiral in this tub and he died. Like he literally contorted himself into this spiral. And I'm just like, where did this start? Like why all of a sudden... His father just became obsessed. And how did this happen? Okay, so his father died and they held the funeral. They told everyone he tripped and fell down the stairs and died that way. But Shuichi, of course, told his girlfriend the truth and that's what happened. So they cremate his ashes. Uh, in Japan, we do not do burials. Japanese people cremate. Um, so usually you go to like a Shinto place and they cremate your body so also there's just not enough space everyone cremates over there so he died Shuichi's father died I mean they cremated his body 
and there's smoke going up in the air. And guess what? The ashes, like his father's ashes, like the smoke, it's going up in the form of a spiral. Are we surprised? Not really at this point. Um, so, and then not only that, the spirals are going up in the air and then is settling into a pond that's right by Kirie's house. They call it Dragonfly Pond. So literally his father's ashes were going up in a spiral and then descending back down into Dragonfly Pond right by Kirie's house. And I'm like, that's not freaky at all. That's kind of what happened in the first part. Shuichi's mother, when she finds a spiral, um, her husband's ashes going up in a spiral, she sees Shuichi's father's face in the clouds among these spirals. And she starts going insane after that. She starts going paranoid about spirals. Like she does not want to see any spirals whatsoever. She's freaking out, okay? She even saw the spirals on her fingertips. She cut them off and she cut off, she just shaved off all her hair so she doesn't have to see like the spiral like that we have on our heads. Shuichi now like wears a hat and he wears gloves so he doesn't freak his mom out about his own spirals and it got to the point where she had to be hospitalized because she is just not mentally stable like and she feels that she can hear her husband telling her to join him and join the spirals just totally nuts and um so she's in this hospital Shuichi's trying to take care of her and everything so you're kind of seeing things from his perspective at this point and um, he sees this diagram of the human body and like they're highlighting the ear. And he sees this small part on the chart where there's a, a spiral in our ear, you know, for the balance and everything. And he's like, at this point, if my mom finds out that there's something in her body that has spirals, like, I don't know what she's gonna do. I don't know what she's gonna do to herself. So he made the director hide that poster. And she, she recognized that Shuichi is hiding something because literally there's like the centipede that tries to go in her ear when she's sleeping at night in the hospital and she wakes up and she sees like her husband's face on this millipede or centipede or whatever it is. Um, and he's like, join me, join the spirals. There's spirals in your ear. So in the end, she goes nuts. She takes scissors and jabs herself in the ear. She ends up dying. Her ashes also go up in spirals when she's cremated. And lo and behold, they settle in Dragonfly Pond. And I'm mentioning the Dragonfly Pond because it's important. As you'll find out soon. I'm talking about Kirei's father. And he, like I said before, he's a potter. And he is going to like this convention thing to sell his pottery. That's kind of what it seems like. And lately he has been making like these pottery. He's putting it in the kiln. He's making it normal. He puts it in the kiln and then they come out full of spirals. And you're just like, what is happening? Why is this happening? So um, you find out that he's making, th he's making these clay pieces out of the clay from Dragonfly Pond. And if you remember, all the ashes that are swirling up from these dead people are going, it, like the ashes are settling into Dragonfly Pond. It's like Dragonfly Pond is sucking these ashes into itself. So literally the clay he's gathering is pretty much pieces of ashes from these dead people that have been cremated. And the spirals start appearing on all these pottery pieces that he's making and he's making it just normal looking, but when it's in the kiln, that's when it gets changed. And so long story short, her dad's starting to go nuts too. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, can't these two kids catch a break? Like their own parents are starting to go nuts. His dad's like, your father understood art and like, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh great. You know, we have, we have another parental figure just totally going nuts. Um, so anyway, that is a very long recap of only just the first four chapters, but I wanted to talk about the first four chapters because it was very, very jarring for me. Like I'm not gonna go as depth into the rest of the manga, but the reason why I wanted to go more in depth this time is just because again, this was 
a shock factor for me. I knew this was a horror manga, but I, in on all, bleh, in all honesty, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. I didn't know what to expect. I knew there's spirals, but I didn't know like, how are they killing people? Like what is happening? I didn't know anything other than there's spirals. And so these first four chapters are very enthralling. Like it's like a train wreck that I can't look away from. It's like, it's horrible, but it's so gruesome and graphic in a way that instead of being disgusted, I almost kind of laugh because I'm like, oh my gosh, that is dark. That is messed up but I like it. Like it's, it's weird. I really like it. And it was just so shocking for me. And like the first four chapters, I'm just like, what am I reading? What am I reading? And I'm liking it. What is happening? So I wanted to do just the, a recap of the first four chapters, just because they really sucker punched me because again, didn't know what I was getting into. So that's my recap for now. Um, I am just now beginning chapter five and that is on page 139 and it looks like in this edition it's like 630 some or 40 some pages so it's going to be fairly easy to get through especially since I'm already over 100 pages but it's good I'm liking it so far and I will catch you in the next update <laughs> bye hello everyone I am back Sorry for the very, very bad lighting, um, but it is evening time, the sun has gone down, and yeah, this is what I have to work with. But I wanted to give an update on Uzumaki. I am about halfway through now. So this clip is from the next day, so the first clip you guys just saw, that was from yesterday. So I am pretty much going to finish this soon, but because of mom life, I can't just finish things as quickly as I want to, but I made it to chapter 11, which, um, I know like in the last clip, I was giving you guys very detailed, like synopses on what happened in the first four chapters. I'm not going to do that from this point on. Um, but the first four chapters, like I was literally mind blown. Um, I mentioned that too, was you know, just because I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect from this manga. I knew it was a horror manga and I knew there's a spiral, but like, I just had no idea like aliens or like, I just did not know what was happening. So the first four chapters really shocked me. And so I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to go through everything because I was almost like verbally processing what I just read by explaining it all to you. So anyway, my mind has adjusted to this manga style, so no need to give you guys a huge recap, but I'm on chapter 11. Well, I just finished chapter 10 and I am about to start chapter 11. Chapter 11 is called the umbilical cord. So I'm just like, oh dear, like what is going to be happening next? So in case I didn't explain this before, um, each chapter is almost like a short story on how these spirals are affecting the town of Kurozucho. And just to, just to clarify, Cho means town. Um, I thought that's what it meant, but I double checked with my husband, who's a native Japanese speaker. Um, so Kurozu is the name of the town. Um, but how you kind of know if something is a town or a city is like the suffix that they put at the end. Kurozu cho. If kurozu, was it? It's kurozu, right? Yeah, kurozu. So if kurozu was a city, it would be called kurozu shi. Um, shi meaning city. So anyway, um, kurozu cho, um, you kind of find out in the first chapter just kind of what is going on, like how you got introduced to the spirals and stuff like that, like kind of how everything started, right? Um, so then from that point on, each chapter is kind of giving like a short story on how these spirals are affecting the town in various ways. Um, there, from yesterday into today, I read um, some more chapters, obviously, I read six more chapters and each chapter has like its own 
like separate thing on how the spirals are affecting. So for example, there was one story about mosquitoes, how the spirals started affecting the mosquitoes and therefore how they started affecting certain kinds of people. There was a boy that turned into a snail. Again, like obviously these people are not being affected the same way, but the root cause are spirals. Even our main character, Kyrie, she got affected by the spirals and luckily Shuichi saved her. So I'm like, oh my God, thank goodness. Like that was a close one. That one freaked me out. Um, but oh my gosh, like I think so far, let me go through like the chapter list. Which one, if I had to say which one freaked me out the most, um, I probably would have to say the snail. The snail chapter eight is probably the one that has freaked me out the most. Um, but Jack in the Box was also a little frightening. But part of it kind of made me laugh too. Like, you know, like those parts in like horror movies or something where something scary happens. But at the same time, it's kind of funny, like how it's kind of going about and stuff. Like it kind of made me laugh for the same kind of reason. Um, so anyway, that's where I'm at. Chapter 11 is the umbilical cord. And this manga, I'm looking at the contents here. Um, there's 20 chapters. So again, that's, that's kind of why I'm halfway through. I am halfway through. I'm really enjoying this so far. Like I'm liking this even more than I thought I would, especially now that I can kind of understand how each chapter is working and just kind of how bizarre this all is and disturbing but I'm liking that I'm disturbed and I just think that Junji Ito has a very vivid rich imagination I also wonder how he came up with this because I don't know if I could come up with something like this I kind of wonder what kind of man he is to come up with this kind of stuff but it definitely makes me look forward to finishing this manga and then read his other stuff because I do own Tomie. So that will be the one that I read next, you know, another time. But now that I know that at least so far, I'm really loving this manga style. I'm loving this horror. And like the, even though the images are pretty disturbing, I'm really loving it to be honest. So I think I'm really vibing with with Junji Ito a lot so I'm pretty sure he's someone that I want to buy all of his stuff but yeah that's all that I have for you um I'm gonna be reading more tonight so after I end this clip I'm gonna be reading more and I'm really excited to see what the other stories have to offer hello friends it is the next evening today is May 5th uh, Friday, so I realized I wasn't saying dates, but it's Friday, May 5th. I have my Spread Asian Joy shirt on. It's actually my husband's, but I stole it. He got it from a work thing. But anyway, I haven't read anything else in Uzumaki. Earlier today, I finished House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Mass, and I dedicate a lot of time to finishing that finishing that one. And I wanted to get started on my May TBR for the Asian books or books by Asian authors for this month. So anyway, haven't read anything else, but I'm about to get started. And can I just say, I love this quilt. My mother-in-law made it. Um, this one's actually for my daughter. She did like a Hawaiian theme. Uh, my mother-in-law is from Bali, Indonesia. Really beautiful place. If you guys have never been, I highly recommend it long plane ride if you're in America, but it's so worth it. Um, so I have this quilt and this is another one that my mother-in-law made. This one is mine, but I didn't want a bigger one. I just wanted one for my lap. So I am going to drink my hot chocolate, which has been so nice to read in the evenings, having some hot chocolate. I'm gonna read Uzumaki and we're gonna go from there. I can't wait to see what these next stories are going to be like. So if you're still here, thanks for watching and let's see what else this manga has in store for me.
chapter 11, which was the umbilical cord. That was freaking gross. <laughs> that one was disgusting. Um, even more horrifying is that it dealt with Kirie's cousin, Keiko. That is freaking sad. <laughs> Ugh. That is pretty disturbing. Yikes. Yeah, so the next one is called The Storm. And we'll see what this one has in store. I just want to say, like, at least so far, I both like and also dislike a little bit that each chapter is almost like a like a like a short story. So we get this overarching plot, right, about the spirals, the Uzumaki, and how the Uzumaki is affecting everyone in the town. And if you've read this before, which I hope you have because you're watching this spoiler-filled reading vlog, you know that the spiral is affecting people in very different ways. That's why pretty much every single chapter is another way that the spiral is affecting the town. And while I do like that and it makes it interesting because we get all these, you know, interesting and gross looking stuff, at the same time, I wish that there was more with each story. Like, I wish there was more explanation because at the end of the umbilical cord, Kirie just says that she escaped the hospital and she has no idea what happened um, after that and she's not going to go back to find out. And I'm just like, well, there obviously is going to be some repercussions, right? Like, someone has to find out what's going on in that hospital. And is everyone still really so dense in the town at this point that they're not recognizing, like, all this crazy stuff going on? It would be great if Junji Ito could take each short story or, like, each chapter and expanded it into its own manga. I think that would be really interesting because I guess I'm feeling a little bit unsatisfied with just how much we're getting in each chapter. Like, I think it's amazing, but I kind of want more. I kind of want to know more, like more resolution because we're not really getting answer answers as to what is going on and how how is this going to play in the future? And also how at this point are people just not fleeing from this town because we got these weird mushroom umbilical cord things in this story we have you know star-crossed lovers that spun around into each other and dove into the ocean we got people turning into snails like at this point why aren't people leaving this town and you know getting away from the spiral influence because i think it's pretty clear that something weird's going on like is everyone just ignorant like i'm just kind of like and why is kirie still and Shuichi, like Shuichi hasn't left either. I know he's convinced, he's trying to convince Kirie about leaving, but yeah, we shall see. The next one's called The Storm. So let's see what happens. Like, oh my gosh. 
Yes, he's weird. And he went through a lot in the beginning of this manga. I mean, he literally lost his parents at the very beginning. He's going through some dark stuff, obviously. And the Uzumaki is obviously drawn to Kyrie because this storm was attracted to her, wanted to like suck her up into this storm. And I just think he's so great at protecting her. Like, even at the beginning of this a chapter, chapter 12, she even said, Shuichi, without you, I would have died a long time ago. And it's true. It's very, very true. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep reading for a bit. And I will let you know when I reach a stopping point or when I just finish it all together. So let's do this. Okay, I'm back. Sorry if you can hear noise in the background. I am running laundry or doing laundry. So if you can hear water running and the dryer, that's what that is. Um, I just started chapter 15, which I believe it's called Chaos. Is that what it is? Yeah, Chaos. And it's funny, my mom just texted me. So my mom borrowed the Japanese version of Uzumaki. I got the Japanese manga when I went in when I went to Japan last October. It is part of my manga haul from Japan video. If you haven't seen it, I will link it in the description. But when my parents came to visit, she saw that it was on my shelf and she didn't know what it was. But my mom doesn't have a ton of books in Japanese anymore. Um, they're kind of hard to come by where she lives and stuff. And she doesn't like reading isn't like her big big hobby but she saw that I had a manga that was written in Japanese and she was excited and she's like okay uh can I borrow this and I said yes definitely let's try to read it together so my mom is reading it and she just texted me that she just finished chapter 13 which I literally just read that one not too long ago that's the one called the house and she's like that is so disgusting <laughs> It is so funny because, you know, I know you guys don't know my mom or anything, but she is like a prim and proper lady. Like, she was born and raised in Tokyo. She, <laughs> this is totally out of her comfort zone. And sorry for if my phone is being strange. I see it kind of zooming. Um, but my mom is from Tokyo. Like, she does not read stuff like this. This is very much out of her comfort zone. And she, it was funny because she said, I can't believe you're making me read this. And I said, you're the one that asked to borrow it. And I said, yes, don't blame me. But it's just really fun to discuss this with my mom. When we talked about this last night, she read up to chapter eight, I believe. And I think that's when she finished the snail. Was it? Yeah, she just finished the snail. Um, when I talked to her yesterday, she said that in her opinion, um, up to that point, up to chapter eight, she just thought the first two chapters were probably the most unsettling because she had no idea what she was getting into. And that's similar thoughts to what I had. I think just the beginning, I had no idea how it was going to be introduced. I had no idea how these spirals were going to be affecting people. And so reading those first two chapters, especially about Shuichi's parents, I was just, I had no idea what to expect. So they really left an impact. And the rest of the chapters, yes, they are disturbing, but at least it's not like a huge surprise anymore. I'm like, oh, the spirals are affecting people in this way. <laughs> Go figure. You know, at this point, nothing is really out of the realm of possibility, which makes it kind of fun. But anyway, I'm gonna continue reading and I don't have that much more to go. So I plan to just finish this tonight and give you guys my final thoughts either tonight or tomorrow. Okay, so if you are still watching, thank you so much. I know that this is a longer type of video. Um, so I did not anticipate liking it as much as I did and wanting to talk about it as much as I did. So if you're still here, thank you so much. So let's get into the ending of Uzumaki. I finished it last night and it was disturbing. And I will say I do enjoy horror manga. I think it definitely is my jam. Um, towards the end, it got kind of scary, you know, 
at at one point in my reading blog, I was like, does no one in the town understand that what is going on is scary? Like, is no one noticing like these snail people happening? Like, why is no one trying to leave? So it seemed like there were people that were starting to leave, like literally, like right as I started reading again, after making that comment, there was a mention about how there are a lot of houses that are available um, because Cutie and her family, they live by Dragonfly Pond. And as we all know, a lot of the weird shenanigans going on, it's all connected to Dragonfly Pond. And Cutie's family lost their home in a series of hurricanes and Dragonfly Pond sucked them all up. So they lost their home. They need to find a new home in town. Why they didn't try to leave town at that moment, I have no idea. So that part was a little annoying, like just why they didn't just leave. But I guess that wouldn't be... There wouldn't be much of a story if they just left, right? So, um, but anyway, like, so then people are starting to leave. They're starting to realize, like, things are not what they seem. But then there gets to a point where you can't leave anymore. Like, if you try to leave Kurozucho, like, you are just in a spiral. Like, you can't leave. You try to leave through the tunnel. It just seems to wind on forever. Like, you try to go through the hills. You can't make it through. So there was that aspect that was addressed. And I do think Shuichi was right. They should have just left because the very end, um, if we're talking like there was an afterward of like a series of comics, like after like maybe like some, like a chapter that they didn't include. But I just think um, the ending, I, I was a little bummed at the ending to be honest. And I think I was bummed because I just felt like it wrapped up so quick. Like we were just finding out like what is going on. Dragonfly Pond got drained. You find this huge like spiral staircase going down into the earth. I mean, like you're just like, what is going on? But like you just give barely an explanation and it's just an explanation that Shuichi came up on his own. Like spiral suck things in the eye, follows the pattern to the center. I don't know who or what built all this or why, but every few hundred or thousands or tens of thousands of years, it can reach the people above ground. And though its builders are gone, maybe it's still building itself. And they then Shuichi and her, like, anyway, maybe I don't want to get into the final ending, but I just thought like, really, that's, that's the end. And like, at least to me, I feel like there wasn't enough explanation. I don't know if this means I'm stupid or <laughs> what this means, but I just feel like there wasn't enough explanation as to the phenomenon of the spirals. So I wish there was more of that. However, I really enjoyed this. I think each chapter definitely was haunting and scary in its own way. And it was just really enjoyable. Like, I, I love this. I'm really glad I read it. I'm finally Happy to say I joined the Junji Ito train. I definitely want to read Tomie and his other works as well, especially if they are as creepy as this one. So anyway, that is all that I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I know it was a bit of a long one, but thank you if you're still here for sticking it out with me. And let me know down below if you've read Uzumaki, what was your star rating for it? I do think I have to give it five stars despite my like little minor complaints. Still want to give it five stars because I did really enjoy this. I love talking to my mom about it and just getting grossed out by it and everything. It was such a nice reading experience. Definitely made me think a lot. So I'd love to hear your star ratings, what you liked or didn't like about Uzumaki. Did you wish that they did something a little different? I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings in the comments. But anyway, that's all I have and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.